Tom, I know in previous discussions you've spoken reasonably strongly about um, high HDL cholesterol in the periphery um, not being inherently beneficial or, or protective against atherosclerosis and you've spoken about failed drug trials and Mendelian randomization studies that have kind of helped elucidate that uh, post some observational research earlier that had suggested there was this association between high HDL cholesterol and uh, lower risk of cardiovascular disease. How do you feel about, given what you've just stated here about APO, a1, and that's a protein that's found on high-density lipoproteins in the periphery that can cross the blood-brain barrier just as a, as a protein by itself, not as a lipoprotein. Is there any research to suggest that high HDL cholesterol in the periphery is directly protective against dementia through APOA1? Let me answer that quickly, and I know Kellyanne wants to chime in on this too. Uh, you, you know, this HDL cholesterol, which everybody has been making bets on forever, eh, you know, hey, high HDL cholesterol, you're immortal, low HDL cholesterol, if nothing else, you're going to have a heart attack and not live very long. And if we look at population evaluations of thousands and thousands of people, that's sort of a generality that is true. But when you start applying HDL cholesterol metrics to individual people, you're going to make a fool of yourself because not every person follows the rules that a population may follow or so. So we now know uh, there are people with low HDL cholesterol who do not wind up getting heart attacks and vice versa. There are people with a high HDL cholesterol who previously were told they're immortal. And, and a side of that is women tend to have higher HDL cholesterols than men. So women have been told for decades, we don't care what your APOB or HDL cholesterol is. Your quote unquote good cholesterol is saving you. So this is utter nonsense, and we have to get away from that. So if you look at the type of studies, and they're all either post hoc or observational, there are segments of people with high HDL cholesterol who wind up with various adversities, including ischemic coronary artery disease. I've seen one trial linking it to a type of breast cancer, and there is a trial linking high HDL cholesterol to a higher incidence of dementia or so. If you read those articles, that association, which is certainly not randomized, <laughs> blinded type of observation, uh, the authors can give you no explanation as to what might be going on, except, hey, this is what we saw. And I think the golden rule to take from that, if you have a high HDL cholesterol and you've gone to some practitioner and he's granted you immortality because of your high HDLC or that you're protected against everything, that's nonsense. Don't believe it. Now, I don't know how to tell any man or woman who might have high HDL cholesterol, you're going to have dementia unless I start running the battery of tests that Kellyanne might run on somebody or so. In the lipid world, I can start looking at ApoB or the more causal factors to try and, oh, you're the person with high HDL cholesterol who is going to have a heart attack because your ApoB is through the roof. So who cares what your HDL cholesterol is? HDL cholesterol metrics have nothing to do with the functionality of the HDL particle. The one thing I want to, I don't want people to think, oh, but it, uh, high APOA1 means you have high HDL cholesterol. Absolutely not. HDL particles can have from one to five copies of APOA1. So you could have big HDLs carrying very few copies of APOA1. The HDL cholesterol is high, but the APOA1 is not. Likewise, you could have a lot of small HDLs, but maybe they're carrying extra copies of APOA1, but they're not carrying very much cholesterol. So APOA1 is high, but HDL cholesterol is low. So understand, I got a nice graphic, APOA1, and then there's an equal sign with a dash through it, does not equal HDL cholesterol. Another equal sign with a dash through it does not equal HDL functionality. So be careful thinking these markers are related to one another, APOA1, HDL cholesterol, or HDL particle count. They're not. This is uh, 
This is why we need more conversations like this, by the way, is because the people who are writing a lot of these articles are neurologists like me with no actual background in this topic. And this is really how this union became, I would send Tom articles and he'd be like, they did not have anyone with any knowledge of li the lipoprotein system reading this. Um, we just need more cross-cutting specialties and interests in neurology and cardiology need to be more united to really make a lot more sense of these these associations that we find. I don't want to insult every neurologist. No, true, they're extremely deficient. But if you round up the average primary care physician or even the average cardiologist and you start asking them about brain lipids, zero knowledge of it for the most part. So uh, it's fortuitous that I bumped into Richard a long time ago. Uh, and we started getting an interest in lipids. And then, boy, my path got so much brighter today. Kellyanne and I became colleagues because we did a lot of chatting like this back and forth, sharing articles, reading it. And even when I took the deep dive into the brain, thanks to Kellyanne, uh, I just was reading so many articles and the peer review of even people writing about the brain lipoproteins who should know better, lipidologists, you know, there's so much errors in all these articles. So you just, <laughs> it, it's tough to tr figure this out. Kelly and Ann are, uh, and I are slowly working on a better compendium to put this all together and it will come to fruition and it's well needed out there, that's for sure. But it is complex and as Kellyanne knows, it keeps changing even now. So once we come up with a set of ideas, along comes a new article, ooh, we have to rethink that aspect of it. Or so, so. But there's a lot to learn, and very few people understand this world right now. Yes, I certainly agree that this type of collaboration is almost never a bad idea. My, my question earlier, Tom, where I was asking about HDL cholesterol, so I was wrongly presuming that high HDL cholesterol meant high APOA1. So now I understand that, that those are different. And my thinking was, I was thinking of someone with a copy of APOA4 or two copies and whether doing things with their lifestyle to raise HDL cholesterol could be a benefit by increasing APOA1, getting more of those across the blood brain barrier. I now understand that that's not going to be a good marker to tell you how much APOA1 is getting across the blood brain barrier. Can you measure APOA1 directly? Yeah, it's, it's an immunoassay. Uh, and uh, until now, there's been no use to do it because the confusion where there's multiple copies of APOA1 for uh, per HDL particle. In the old days, it was used as an HDL particle biomarker, but it's a guesstimate at best. Now, once NMRs came along, they can, if you want them for whatever reason, they can give you very accurate HDL particle counts. But in the periphery, we really have not been able to tie that into anything. And I don't know where we're going uh, with it in the future or so. Uh, so but uh, you just have to keep these biomarkers separate. I don't see a big future for measuring APOA1. Even if obesetropib comes and proves it's going to be good uh, for doing it, maybe if I'll have some data tying that into APOA1 concentrations, but we're a long way from, uh, I shouldn't even speculate about that now. It's a transferable apoprotein. It can jump around from this thing to that thing. And... Uh, Little just to, I love confusing things. I told you what a small apoprotein APOA1 is compared to the big monster APOB and even the truncated APOB48 that's on chylomicrons. There's a couple of, uh, APOE is not that much bigger, but it cannot cross the blood brain barrier. But there are a couple of other apoproteins that are rather small, a little bit bigger than APOA1 that almost certainly can cross. And it's a couple of members of the APOC family, which we know do exist in the brain. I don't think we have much of an idea what the heck APOC uh, uh, three or one are doing in the brain in the periphery, C3 can be a bad guy, but so uh, there are other uh, apoproteins that can cross the blood brain barrier, but they're not going to be part of our discussion for now because I, unless Kelly and Ann knows something, I think we'd be sheer over speculating what they do in the brain. Mm -hmm.